Picture yourself standing in the middle of a construction site. Do you see the metals, woods, blocks, concretes, cements, and aggregates? Do you hear the sound of every hammer struck against the nail head? Have you ever pondered how these are used to assemble buildings or how each story is made to rise? Ponder no more, for you are about to be introduced to the world of buildings and assemblies. Everything you need to know, we will share with you. You are surely in for a great learning ride. Sit comfortably, listen well, and enjoy. Let's talk about building materials. These are materials that are used in constructions of buildings, houses, and other structures. This includes traditional materials such as wood and newer materials that are designed to meet a variety of modern construction requirements. Examples Concrete It is a composite building material made from a combination of aggregate and a binder. An example of this binder is a cement. To get a concrete construction of almost any size, as concrete has a fairly low tensile strength, it is normally fortified using steel rods or bars. Mostly, this combination is called three bars. This reinforced concrete is subsequently referred to as a reinforced concrete. Concrete has become the predominant building material in this contemporary era owing to its longevity, formability, and ease of transportation. Cement It is a fine mineral powder fabricated with a very precise procedures. Mixed with water, this powder that's formed into a glue that binds all the materials mixed with it. Since the last composition and fine sense of the powder can be fluctuated, cement has different properties depending upon its own makeup. It's an economical, high-quality construction material used in the construction work worldwide. Cement is produced by grinding together a mixture of limestone and clay, which is then heated to a temperature of 1450 degrees. What results is a granular substance known as flicker, that a combination of calcium, silicate, alumina, and iron oxide. Fever side. It may also refer to some textural class of soil or soil type. An example is a soil containing over 85% sun-sized particles in bulk. The composition of sand varies depending on the local rock resources and conditions. However, the most frequently constituent of sand is silica or silica dioxide, normally in the kind of quartz. The most frequently kind of sand is the calcium carbonate. By way of instance, aragonite, which has been largely been generated within the last half billion decades, by various types of life forms, like corals and shellfish. Aggregates. These are made by crushing the large rocks in crusher industries. These are the most important load-bearing component of concrete used in construction. Aggregates are of different sizes, such as 10 mm, 20 mm, etc. Aggregates occupy most of the volume of the concrete and a share of its weight is highest in concrete. Bricks It is a block made from a kiln fired material, usually clay or shale, but also could be of lesser quality sand, etc. Clay bricks are mainly formed by the process of molding, the soft mud method, or in commercial manufacture, more frequently by extruding clay through a die and after that, wire cutting them to the appropriate size, the stiff mud process. Bricks are widely utilized as a building material in Asia. This was likely due to the simple fact that it had been much more far retardant than timber in the ever-crowding cities and fairly cheap to create. Next to bricks is steel. 
Steel is a metal alloy whose major component is iron and is the typical choice for metal structure building materials. It is powerful, flexible, and if treated well, it lasts quite a very long time. Metal figures quite prominently in prefabricated structures used in most cosmopolitan cities. It requires a good deal of human labor to create an alloy, especially in the large quantities required for the building industries. Next is wood. It is a product of trees and sometimes other fibrous crops used for construction purposes when pressed or cut into timber and timber, like boards and similar materials. It is a generic building material and is employed in building pretty much any form of construction in many climates. Wood can be quite flexible under hips, keeping strength while bending, and is incredibly powerful when compressed vertically. There are lots of different qualities to the different kinds of timber, even one of the same three species. This implies specific species are better for various applications than others. It in the list of examples is glass. These are utilized since the invention of glass to pay tiny openings in a building. They provided people with the ability to both let light into chambers while at exactly the exact same time keeping the inclement weather outside. The glass is usually created from mixtures of sand and silicates and is extremely brittle. Contemporary glass curtain walls may be employed for the entire facade of a building. Glass may also be utilized to span over a wide roof construction in a space frame. The most familiar glass forms are fiberglass products that are being used for insulation and translucent panels. Another is glass insulation and is typically installed as loose particles blown into cavities and cellings used as a specialized equipment. Mind is ceramics. These are things such as tiles, fixtures, and etc. Ceramics are largely utilized as fixtures or coverings in buildings. Ceramic floorings, walls, countertops, and even ceilings. Many countries utilize ceramic roofing tiles to ensure many buildings. Ceramics used to be only a specialized type of clay pottery firing in kilns, but it has developed into more technical areas. Ceramics are used in the manufacture of paper in building materials, for example, as mentioned, like tiles, bricks, and pipes. Ceramic pipes are considered the most environmentally friendly since in the process of their manufacture, only water and clay are used. Ceramic tiles are the most fairly common finishing materials. Last in the list of examples is plastics. The term plastics covers a variety of synthetic or semi-synthetic, organic condensation or polymerization products that can be molded or extruded into objects or films or fibers. Their name is derived from the fact that in their semi-liquid state, they are malleable or have the property of plasticity. Plastics vary immensely in heat tolerance, hardness, and resiliency. They are being utilized for producing water pipes and sewage pipes, and many other products used at the time of the house construction. Plastics are used in a growing range of applications in the construction industry. Plastics in construction are mainly used for seals, profiles like windows and doors, pipes, cables, floor coverings, and insulation. So those 10 are the examples of construction, materials or building materials. Factors to consider in selecting building materials. Number one, type of structure. The selection of building materials varies based on the type of building. For example, if the structure is a load-bearing structure, choose best quality bricks for construction because bricks are the primarily load-carrying element in the load-bearing structure. Whereas, for frame structure, high-strength bricks are not necessary because concrete members are the primarily load-carrying elements. Number 2. Performance Requirements 
The next factor to consider in the selection of building materials is the performance requirements expected for the materials. This is basically what we want this material to do. What are the engineering characteristics we want the materials to possess? Like for example, its strength, weight, heat conductivity, soundproof, durability, and many more. For example, for high-rise building, it needed a thin, lightweight blocks to reduce the weight of the structure. Whereas, residential building and library building needs a high thickness bricks or blocks for some proof. Number 3. Cost Effectiveness Naturally, cost-effect materials will take precedence over other materials, provided other requirements are met. Cost is a major concern for all stockholders involved in the project. Some of the cost-effective materials are the manufactured sand, fly ash bricks, PVC cement, roofing sheets, and etc. Number 4. Building Materials Availability Availability plays a major role in the selection of building materials. Because if materials are locally available, transportation costs will be lower and the materials can be bought in smaller quantities based on convenience. Plus, the chances of getting cheated by the local suppliers is lower than others because they usually care for their reputation in their service area. So, it is best to select the locally available material for the construction of your building. Number 5. Climate Climate plays an important role in certain areas. For example, in places like European countries where very little sunlight is available, we can use glass as a major construction materials to bring in more sunlight into the building. But unfortunately, people in India try to copy the West, use the glass cladings, and bring in more heat inside their building. So, the climate is one of the deciding factors that influence the selection of particular building materials in certain locations. Number 6. Aesthetic reasons. We all obviously want to build or choose to use structures that look good, right from buildings, road to bridges, and towers. Aesthetic plays an important role in choosing the proper building materials in many areas. Number 7. Environmental reasons. And finally, one thing that we as human beings have neglected so far, but beginning to realize the importance in the past decades is the environmental concerns about the use of the construction materials like energy content, the raw material usage, depletion of natural resources, emission, and etc. Now, let's talk about building assemblies. Building assemblies it is an assortment of devices or products that are linked together to have a specific purpose. An assembly in construction can be a window assembly, a door assembly, or basically any combination of materials, equipment, electronic devices that when assembled together will have a specific purpose and function. Building assemblies Number one, we have wall assembly. The wall assembly consist of a system of components that fulfill the support, control, and the finished function of the building envelope. While the precise placement and configuration of each component may vary between climates and individual buildings. We have seven components of all assembly. Number one is exterior cladding. The exterior cladding is the first barrier to prevent all moisture penetration into the building interior. Under the exterior cladding, typical materials include stucco. Stucco is pine plaster. And we have exterior insulation finishing system or the EIFS. The 
Game Break na binigyan yung signing and the sender signing that photo is binigyan yung signing number 2 is exterior sheathing membrane exterior sheathing is the waterproofing membrane that protects the underlying structure from bulk moistures and grease in residential homes typically use building rough while the modern commercial structures typically rely on more modern waterproofing systems such as self-adhering styrene, butadiene, styrene, or the SBS rubberized asphalt sheds. In number 3, we have the exterior shedding. The plot surface that receives the exterior shedding membrane around the perimeter of the building. Typically, the exterior shedding is comprised of a manufactured wood product such as plywood or oriented strand board or the OSB. Number 4 is insulation. Insulation is any material used in the wall assembly to retard the transfer of heat through the wall. Commonly used materials include fiberglass pads, polysocyanary rigid board, and polyurethane foam. Batting insulation is the most common and least expensive of these insulations. In number 5, we have the structural components. A variety of structural support forms are available to transfer loads through the wall assembly. In a typical residential wall, wood stands comprise the primary structural component. However, Commercial and industrial building wall assemblies may be structurally supported by a variety of components such as reinforced concrete and the structural steel members. Number 6 is vapor barrier. The air or vapor barrier is an essential component of the wall assembly. If water makes its way through the wall and wets the insulation, significant damage can occur to the insulation, decreasing its heat retention and potentially growing mold. The last component of wall assembly is the interior setting or the drywall. The interior setting is the finished surface of the wall assembly that the occupants will interact with on the interior of the building. The interior setting is typically comprised of gypsum board, or colloquially known as drywall. Another type of building assemblies is the door assembly, wherein it is the joining of different door panels and types to form a single entity for its in installation or stability purposes. A door assembly can consist of several door units and windows or combination of both. The door assembly identification used in this reference is to several units mold together. However, a door assembly like a window assembly can be also a reference, a combination of the door and frame which makes up the assembly. Floor Ceiling Assembly Floor ceiling assembly is the term used to describe how a floor ceiling is built. It is important because each assembly has a different thickness, components, and more importantly, fire and sound rating. The biggest issue in floor ceiling between live board units is that they must attain an impact rating of IIC 50 or impact isolation class. For example, an 8-inch thick solid concrete will not achieve IIC 50, which is to say that someone walking on the floor above in high heels will be hurt. Ways to address this include a concrete topping, log over thin sound proofing material or carpet on pad, usually not a material of choice for live work. Wood frame floor ceiling assemblies which can met IIC 50 usually include at least one layer of 5-8 inch jeep board on the ceiling hung on resilient channels. So these are the 7 examples of floor or ceiling assembly. Number 1. 
the assembly of reinforcing bars and wire in a foundation wall and load-bearing column. Number 2 shows a pre-stressed concrete or double T presenting the array of steel cable tendons near the bottom of the load-bearing beam. Number 3 shows a composite of concrete on corrugated galvanized sheet steel with embossings to better bind to the concrete. Number 4 shows the underside of this floor supported by steel bar joist. Wood trusses are intricate frames of lumber joined together in triangular shape by galvanized steel connector plates commonly known as chest plate. It is designed to bridge the space above room and provide support for the roof. Wood trusses have two kinds of member, that is the compression member and tension member. Compression member are structural elements that are pushed together and subjected to compressive force. These compression members have two types of materials that is the heavy timber and dimensional lumber. Tension member, on the other hand, are structural elements that are subjected to axial tensile force. And these tension member have two kinds of materials, and that is steel tubing and rod with smaller dimensions. Ceiling lining is used under timber or concrete flooring with any proprietary gypsum plaster board and cavities that contain an insulation material. It is used for leveling poor concrete and wooden floor. Resilient bar is designed to improve acoustic insulation when constructing a conventional ceiling under timber joist. This helps to reduce vibration and noise penetration. Environmental Impact of Building Materials Production and Building Construction Letter A. Excessive Fuel Consumption It happens during material transport from the site, between the plant in the site, and the construction operations themselves. Letter B. Traffic Delays, Congestion and Noise Emissions generated during construction and production of building material as well. Letter C. The pollution and energy consequences of the manufacturing and production process. Letter D. Toxicity of product and chemicals used in manufacturing process. Example global warming potential and ozone depletion potential. Letter E. Waste issues at all stages of the production and construction processes. So these are the 10 building materials that can be reused after demolition. Number 1 are concrete, bricks, and blocks. Method, concrete and brick can be recycled by crushing them into rubble. Repurpose. Once sorted, screened and contaminants are removed. Reclaimed concrete or brick can be used in concrete aggregate, fill, road base or rip rub. So number two is gypsum. Method, gypsum is relatively easy to recycle. Contaminants need to be removed, such as screws and nails, and separate the paper. Repurpose, it can be ground into a powder or turned into pellets. The resulting material is sold to manufacturers that use gypsum for different applications. Number 3 is wood. Method use is wood can be reused, repurposed, recycled, or burned as bioenergy. Repurposed, wood can be used in pathways, coverings, mulches, compost, animal bedding, or particle board. Number 4 is glass. Method. There are various methods of recycling glass. In order to make it fit for repurposing such as crushing, screening to remove contamination, air classification, optical sorting, size classification, and washing and drying. Repurpose. 
Glass can be used for pretty much anything including decorative materials, fluxing agent in the manufacture of bricks and ceramics, insulation, containers, and even sports turf applications. Metals Method Metals are collected, sorted, and then shredded. The scrap is then melted and purified and finally allowed to cool to solidify. Repurpose Metals, including steel, copper, and brass are valuable commodities to recycle. Like glass, they can be repurposed into a vast array of items such as appliances, furnishings, fixtures, and lighting. Aggregates Method Concrete aggregate collected from demolition sites is put through a crushing machine. Crushing facilities accept only uncontaminated concrete, which must be free of trash, wood, paper, and other such materials. Repurpose Aggregate can be reused as a base material under foundations, roads, and railroads. Plasterboard Method Composting Repurpose Standard plasterboard, which hasn't been contaminated by paint or similar, can be added to an aerobic composting system and is likely to have a neutral or beneficial effect when added to the soil, especially clay soil. Next, plastics. Method. All plasterboard recycling goes through a thorough process which takes away all of the added material which is left on the plasterboard when it's removed from the wall or ceiling. Repurpose In construction, plastics are generally used for pipe work, interior fittings, window frames, scaffolding boards, and curbstones. This can be repurposed into packaging, textile fiber, and clothing street furniture to name only a few. Floor and wall coverings Method we have fiber solve, micro release, and thermal hydraulic processes. First is fiber solve. Subjecting wood fiber to a vacuum and pressurize steam with mechanical agitation at a high temperature. Micro release. Using microwaves to reclaim wood fibers from the rest seat. And last is thermal hydraulic processes. Separating the adhesive from the wood fibers. Repurpose. There tends to be a lot of wastage when it comes to floor and wall coverings due to over-ordering. Pairing this with the fact that a lot of it can also be recycled afterwards. Materials such as ceramic and terrace tiles, wallpaper, carpet, carpet tiles, vinyl and linoleum, and laminate floorings can be repurposed into many things including road cone manufacturing and animal bedding material. Last is insulation. Method. Insulation can be recycled by returning materials through take-back skins offered by manufacturers. But reclamation and reprocessing can only happen after removing impurities such as nails and screws. Repurpose. Similarly, Materials involved in insulation such as glass and stone wool, polystyrene, chips wool, spray foam, polyurethane, and fiberboard can be transformed into concrete blocks, fiberglass board, and fiberglass ceiling tiles. That's all, we're done. Thanks for watching. 
and if you have some questions or clarifications regarding our presentation, you are free to comment down below and we will immediately respond.